bye bye. Yes, he'll answer bye Will bye. Pray Pastor, keep your day job. Have Stop singing. Thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord God, starting us on our way. Thank you for clothing us in our right mind, Father. Thank you for allowing us to come into the house of the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. Oh, we just praise your name, God. We glorify you. We honor you. We adore you today, God. Thank you, God, for the activity of our limbs that allowed us to walk up in here to praise your holy name. We just thank you, God. We won't allow the rocks to cry out for us, God. So we worship you today, Father, in spirit and in truth, Lord God. We just thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Merry Christmas. Good morning, and welcome to Mount Carmel Ministries. We're here at 2015 Grove Street, Vicksburg, Mississippi. Our pastors are Mitchell and Deborah Dent, and we just invite you to worship with us today. We invite you to serve the all-powerful, almighty God who is able to do anything but fail. So if you're watching over the airways, hit your share button and invite someone else to be blessed right along with you today. And if you have a prayer request, don't forget, you can leave us a message and someone will get back in touch with you. But get involved in your worship service today. If you hear something that you agree with, the Bible says say amen. So you can type it if you're online. Talk back. Our pastor love it when you talk back to him, and we will tell him your response, and he will respond to you. And we just uh, welcome you today to just get full on God today. Don't, don't leave out of this service the same way you came in, because he has made us free. And he who the Son set free is free indeed. So you're free to praise him today. You're free to worship him today. Take advantage of that. Don't let the hearse bring you to church. Come on and praise and worship him while you still got the blood running warm in your vein. Amen? Oh, God, we just love you and thank you today. Now we're going to have scripture by Deacon Coleman and then prayer by Minister Wilson. Amen. Merry Christmas. Amen. If you would please stand and go with us to the word of God from the book of Acts chapter 2. We're going to start the first verse. Acts 2, starting at verse 1. Going to read about Pentecost. Acts chapter 2, starting at the first verse. Starting at verse 1, the word of God reads, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And now go to verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass at the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapors of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever 
shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our Father who are in heaven, Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of all faith. Oh, Father, we just come here today in your house of worship. Oh, Father, we're here is just to praise your holy name. And, Father, we're here to just thank you. Thank you so much for just letting us see it's just another day. Oh, Father, you said in your word, with two or three gathered in your name, that you would be in the midst. And, Father, we're here today. We're here today is just because we love you. And, Father, we understand that according to your word, because these two or three who gathered in your name, you said you would be here. And, Father, we're claiming that you are here. Oh, Father, we're claiming that because we understand that when you come, Father, all your glory and all your goodness, Father, all your miracles, Father, all your breakthroughs, Father. Oh, Father, oh, sickness will be healed in your presence, Father. Oh, Father, people will be set free in your presence, Father. Oh, Father, there's a liberty, Father, in your presence, Father. Oh, Father, we claim, Father, according to your word, Father, that you are here. And, Father, and there's freedom in you, Father. Oh, Father, we're not under the law anymore, Father. But, Father, we're under your grace this morning, Father. Oh, freedom, Father. Freedom because we choose, Father. We choose, Father, because we love you, Father. Oh, Father, choose you because, Father, you died on a old rugged cross for us, Father. Oh, Father, we love you, and there's freedom, Father. Oh, Father, let your glory reign, Father. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven, Father. Oh, Father, we're calling heaven down here, Father, because Father, you say that you love us so much, Father, that you even, oh, Father, just give us a little piece of heaven, Father, while we're here on earth, Father, and we're claiming that, Father. Father, you said in your word, seek not the assembly of fellow believers, Father. Oh, Father, we're here, oh, Father, to glorify your name. We're here to share your word. We're here to learn more of you, Father. We're here to just continue on this Christian race, Father. Oh, Father, thank you, Father. All your glory is here today. Even the angels, Father, who dealt with you from, from, from the time of the beginning, Father, who go around your throne each and every time they, 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 they fly around you, they see something new, Father. Oh, I praise you this morning. I praise your word this morning. I ask for a special blessing this morning on the man who will, who will stand, Father, in the gap for you this morning. Oh, Father, oh, download him, Father, it's just with your word. Download him, Father. Oh, Father, it's just let him go into the deep treasures of your word. And, Father, we understand that when your word go forth, Father, oh, that's freedom. Oh, that's freedom. Strongholds are broken. And, Father, we're claiming it right now in your darling son Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, God. Uh, come on, let's continue to praise him. Glory to God. Uh, he's a mighty God. Amen. Oh, from the rising of the sun cold, to the going down of the same, we praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we say Merry Christmas. Glory to God. Glory to, and may the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be multiplied unto you. Amen. Glory to God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It is indeed a pleasure to come this morning to share the word of the Lord with you. Amen. You know, I heard one preacher say, any day above ground is a good day. Amen. Because you and I now have another day to get right what we didn't get right yesterday. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. So again, I thank God that he has blessed us to be able to share this morning from his word. Also want to say to those who are tuning in via Facebook Live or Zoom, that you, will, that you will hit that share button and, and, and allow somebody else or let somebody else know that we're on, hallelujah, and that they can hear a word from the Lord this morning. I believe 
that if you will listen, glory to God, with an ear to hear, God will bless you this morning. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the word does work. Amen. Uh, let me say that again. The word does work. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. And as we believe and receive God's word, those things that God has desired for us shall come to pass. Amen. We want to talk about Jonah this morning. Amen. And our title is Running Away Will Not Work. Running away will not work. You know, in our, in our series or in our Bible studies, we've been talking about the fact that we've been chosen by God. And see, when you are chosen by God, you can run, but you cannot hide. When you're chosen by God, you can try to do everything else except what God told you to do, but God will still pester you. Come on now. God will still. See, 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 see God is not a bloodhound, but he, he created the bloodhound. And that the blood, a bloodhound will track you down no matter where you go. Amen. And the Bible says that no, no matter where you go, God says, I'm already there. Uh, so you've got to get in your, in your spirit this morning. Glory to God. You can run. You can't hide. Running away. It's not going to work. Amen. I want you all to pray with me. Father God, we thank you for who you are. We praise you. We magnify you. We lift you up. We thank you, O oh God, that you've given us this day. And you've given us our daily bread. Now, God, as we go through this time of preaching and teaching, none of me, O oh God, but all of you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Teach us from your word today. We thank you that our hearts and our minds will be illuminated by your word and that we will be changed, never to be the same again. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Well, if you're looking at the screen there, glory to God, let me just uh, let you see something. You see something there, amen. The Bible declares that Jonah was received a word from the Lord. Well, let's just read the scripture and we'll come back to it. In verse 1 of Jonah chapter 1, it says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And he went down the Joppa and found the ship going to Tarshish. So he paid his fare and went down in it and to it to go to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Now Nineveh is this wicked city and, and their wickedness has come up before God. The Bible says that sin is a stench in God's nostril. So it's gotta be some stinky stuff that Nineveh was doing to come up to God. Are y'all still with me? Uh, and if you saw the, if you were looking at the screen at, at, at our beginning, Tarshish was in the opposite direction of Nineveh. Not only was it in the opposite direction, it was 2,000 miles further away. It was actually 2,500 miles away from where uh, Jonah was. Nineveh was only 500 miles away from where he was. And so here Jonah is, he decides that he's not going to go there because he has his own issues. Somebody say he has his own issues. Oftentimes, watch this now, we will try to leave or get away from the presence of God because we don't want to do what God said to do. And again, we said earlier, you can't run away from God. He is omnipresent. Find somebody and say he's omnipresent. He's um, I said again, he's omnipresent, um, amen. In the book of Psalms 139, 8 to 10, it says this. Uh, if I ascend into the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me, amen. So there's no place you can go where God is not already there. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes we, we, we talk about God, meet me at church. No, no. Uh, God was already at church before you got here. Amen. Uh, come on now. You have to decide on purpose that you understand what the word of God says, that he is omnipresent. And when you start to get in your mind that God is omnipresent, guess what? There is nowhere you can go and you can't get it dark enough. I, I, I don't hear nobody talking to me. You can't get it dark enough where God can't see. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, we, got, we have to decide now that I'm going to serve the living God. Amen. Jonah's issue, uh, now fear or, or anger or a lot of different emotions can cause one not to want to do what God has called him to do. Oftentimes, fear will cause you to fight, to flee, or, or to freeze. 
Amen. But glory to God, God's word should cause us or should stir us to want to do whatever it was that God told us to do. Amen. In, in spite of it. Amen. Find somebody and tell them you got to fight the good fight. Find somebody and say you got to fight the good fight. Now, the good fight of faith is that you make a decision that no matter what, I'm going to stick here and I'm going to stay. When you, when you decide that you're going to fight the good fight of faith, you're not going to allow anything that happens to stop you from uh, doing what thus saith the Lord. You're not going to get weary. There it is, God, in your well-doing. Amen. For in due season, find somebody else and tell them, in due season, you're going to reap. Oh, hallelujah. I like the way that I heard it over there. I'm going to reap. Amen. You got to make it personal. Amen. Because this is about you. Somebody shout amen. amen. Glory to God. And now, now I know oftentimes we say, you know, uh, uh, it's not about us. It's about God. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son because it was all about you. Amen. And then you got to understand that you are so important to God that he sent his only begotten son. Therefore, God has to be important to you. Watch this now. And you have to be important to you. Are oh, you hearing what I'm saying? You have to be important to you, but you can't think more highly of yourself than you ought. You got to think soberly in line with who God said that you are, and better yet, who God is calling you to be. Amen. Because I don't care who you are right now, I don't care where you are right now, you're not who God is calling you to be. I'm going to pause right there and let that sink in. You're, uh, you, you're good. Come on now. You're good. You, you're good. You're better than you used to be. Come on now. But you are not who God is calling you to be. You know, you, you, there's still some work that he wants to do in you, glory to God, and, glory, and there's some work he has for you to do, but glory to God, he can't do it until he's finished or he's uh, gotten you to a point where you are now able to do that particular thing. And see, here's where, glory to God, when God calls you to do something, I don't care how you feel about it, you got to give in to God. You cannot be like Jonah and decide, I'm going to go in the opposite direction because because I don't want to do that. I don't think that they're worthy of that. Uh, uh, so I'm going to do my thing instead of doing what does say the Lord. Oh, glory. Remember now, running away will not work because you've been chosen by God. Can I say this, Hallelujah? How, how many in here or online has ever taken a job, amen, to get away from somebody on a job, only to find somebody on the new job just like the person you left on the old job? Uh, a situation just like the one you left, you find it where you went because God was not through with you on that other job. God was not through working something in you or working something out of you, and you tried to run away from it. But glory be to God, you can run, but it ain't going to work. You can run, but it ain't going to work when you've been chosen by God. Hallelujah. Uh, ain't it good to know that God will wear you down? Oh, Hallelujah. Uh, isn't it good to know that God got more time than you got? Come on now. Oh, hallelujah. I feel your Holy Ghost. Isn't it good to know that when, because God loves you so much, oh, glory to God, and God wants the very best for you, glory to God, God will keep after you. Oh, glory to God, glory to God. I, I, I'll just find somebody and tell them, I'm so thankful that God is still after me. Glory to God, glory to God. My God, my God, my God. He's awesome, God. Amen. Mm, hallelujah. Now, so here Jonah is. He's trying to go 2,500 miles in the opposite direction. And I guess if you added the 500 miles that it would have taken him to go to, to uh, uh, Nineveh, that's 3,000 miles he's trying to stay away from where God wants him to go. Uh, <laughs> but God is serious about his business. Look at, look at uh, uh, verse 4. Hallelujah. But the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, that the ship was about to be broken up. Then the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God, and they threw the cargo into the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down in the lowest part of the ship and lain down and was fast asleep. Amen. Uh, Jonah said, I'm getting away from here. Glory to God. And Jonah, when he thought it, when he got on the boat, Jonah thought it was all right. Jonah thought he had gotten away scot-free. And so he went down there and took to, uh, uh, and, and he's sleeping. Somebody say he's sleeping. Glory. Hallelujah. Look, look, look. look. 
fast asleep. When I, when I was working on this, brother, I had to put this in here. I, I, I believe somebody was writing, somebody was reading this scripture when they read it. They said, if Jonah can sleep with all that rocking and rolling, oh, water bed. And the idea for a waterbed came up, and they done got rich. Amen. They got rich, I believe, because they read the scripture. Oh, come on now. Come on now. Oh, just give God some glory right there. Amen. Because I tell you, when you read the word of God, God will give you some witty ideas and some witty inventions. Amen. God will stir your imagination that calls you. you see, see when, you, when you read the word of God, you can work smarter and not have to work harder. Oh, glory be to my God. Uh, amen. But watch this now. Look at verse 6. Verse 6. So the captain came to him. So now, 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 now. It's disturbing because Jonah has peace in the middle of this storm. So they went down and they woke him up and said, oh, uh, uh, what do you mean, you sleeper? Arise and call on your God. Now, it's interesting, but when you read the Bible, you see the little G God and the big G God. Oh, uh, hallelujah. God knows how to let you know that there is a distinction between the God and God's. Oh, glory to God. See, you and I have to learn, glory to God, to serve the living God and not just any old kind of God. Amen. Glory to God. There are many gods out there, but there's only one true God. Amen. Glory to God. And when you know that there's only one true God, then it'll let you know to put all those other gods away. Oh, glory to God. And see, sometimes, oh, help me right there. Jonah, come on now, even though he's serving the God, he also has a little God that causes him to run from God. Oh, uh -huh. he has a God of pride. He has a God of arrogance. He has a God of self. He has a God of his own opinion, which causes him to run from what God said to do. Amen. But you can run, but it ain't going to work. Because when you've been chosen by God, God will stay on you, glory to God, until he gets you. Somebody shout amen. Ooh, hallelujah. Glory to God. See, watch this now. Oh, brothers, can I just talk to you a minute? There was a girl that you was dating at one time. Hallelujah. She wouldn't give you the time of day at first. But glory be to God. Something stirred on the inside of you. Said, I'm a slow walker down. I'm a slow walker down. I'm a slow walker down. And you just kept pestering her. Hallelujah, you just, come on now, you just, you know, she, she gave you an answer, gave you the wrong number, but you went back and got the right number, come on now, glory to God, because something had stirred on the inside of you and said, this is the one, glory be to God, and you kept on, um, somebody shout amen. amen, glory to God, if that ain't you, your time coming, hallelujah, somebody shout glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, now watch this now, watch this now, watch this now, okay, and they said, call on your God. Perhaps your, perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. So they said one to another, come and let us cast lots, that we may know who caused this trouble to come upon us. So they cast lots, and it fell upon Jonah. No, 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 no. But can I just say it this way? They, threw, they rolled the dice. <laughs> Glory to God. They, 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 they threw the dice. Amen. And it came up, Jonah, you the one. Amen. How many of you know that God will identify you to other folk? That you are the one. Glory to God. Come on now. Glory to God. See, 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 you already know that God done chose you, but God will confirm that I chose you by when you have other folks say that you're the one. Yeah. Oh, I thank you for your Holy Spirit, God. Watch this now. Uh, and the lot fell upon John. Look at verse 8. Then, he said, uh, then they said to him, please tell us for whose cause this trouble uh, 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 upon us. And uh, whew, what is your occupation? And where do you come from, and what is your country, and, 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 and of what people are you? They got a whole bunch of questions for Jonah, amen, glory to God. They had a whole bunch of questions for Jonah because they are so fearful of what's going on, amen. So he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Now, now, now you know when he said that, boy, that really kind of messed with them, amen, because where they at? They out on the sea. Oh, glory to God, they out on the sea, and the sea is troubling them. And Jonah said, I serve the God who's on the sea. The lot done fell upon Jonah. So they are not only afraid of God, but they're afraid of Jonah. Oh, okay. oh, glory to God, because they understand, glory to God, there's something about this man that's different. Somebody shout amen. amen. Oh, come on now, let's go to the next one. Glory to God. Uh, see, now, 
Mm. Jonah is running because of anguish. Anguish is an uh, agonizing over a decision. But he had to make a decision to either do what God said to do or not do it. Amen. And he chose wrong. Oh, glory to God. Uh-huh. So he's agonizing because now it's coming to light that what you, the decision you made was the wrong decision. How, look, can I tell you something? If you make the wrong decision, go ahead and change and make the right one. Oh, glory to God. Don't be so, the Bible says to obey, come on church, is better than sacrifice. Amen. He said rebellion is as unto the idolatry and stubbornness is as unto witchcraft. Amen. Or witchcraft is unto stubbornness. So don't be so stubborn that you're not willing to allow God be who given you the grace, come on church, to change. Glory to God, glory to God. When you find out your opinion is wrong, when you find out that the decision you made is wrong, be willing to change. Glory. Confession is good for the soul. Somebody shout amen. amen. Glory to God. See, this anguish caused him, caused two factors now to stir in him. Glory to God. He's now angry at God because God sent him to this city that he didn't want to go to. Amen. And he's angry. He, uh, he knows that God has the ability to do what God said he would do. Amen. It, it, sometimes folk won't like you because God chooses to use his ability to bless you. Uh -huh. Oh, glory to God. God chooses to bless you, chooses to grace you because of something, glory to God, that you're doing for him or just the fact that he wants to bless you and other folks will hate you simply because you're blessed by God. Oh, glory. But see, watch this now. Don't allow that blessing that you're walking in, don't allow the grace and the favor of God that's on you to cause you to get an attitude about what God is doing for you. Amen. Glory. Learn, learn how to be graciously grateful. Oh, God, help me right there. Learn how to be graciously grateful. Learn how to be humble even though you rolling in it. Glory be to God. Oh, you balling, hallelujah. Yeah, you got it like that, but still know how to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, letting people know that I didn't do this. Glory to God. It's all by the grace of my God. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all still with me? Oh, glory to God. Watch this now. Now, Nineveh is a wicked city. At one time, it was the largest city in the world for about 50 years. Now, think about this for a minute. Here God is sending Jonah to the largest city in the world. That has to say something about how God felt about Jonah. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Glory. See, 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 God feels good about you. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. But you and I have to learn to feel good about ourselves. Amen. And we have to learn how to feel good about what God is doing in us and through us. Good God Almighty, amen. Oh, hallelujah. And see, I've got to let God, watch this now, work through me and not me try to, you know, tell God how to work through me. Ooh, I feel your Holy Spirit. You see, when you decide, amen, that God, all I am or all I'm going to be is a vessel. Fill me up, come on now, till I overflow, glory to God, a hallelujah, because I want to do what you want me to do the way you want me to do it. Uh-huh, glory. I, I, there are some ways, y'all better help me, that seem right to me. Oh, but every time I've gone that way, I've ended up in a place that you didn't tell me to go. Are oh, you hearing what I'm saying? Glory to God. See, oftentimes, like Tarshish, we be trying to go as fur away as, she going to make me say it right, as far away from the place God told us to go because we don't want to go there because we got an issue with where he told me to go. Or we got an issue with the people who are there. Glory to God. And see, you can't really serve God when you want to pick and choose who God said for you to serve. Oh, my, my, my. Oh, glory to God. You got to decide that I'm going to do it God's way. Somebody shout amen. 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 Now, now let, let's look at something. Uh, 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 up here, we got J uh, Jonah chapter 4. Go, 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 go. Look at Jonah chapter 4. Look what it says. Uh, 
Jonah says, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he became angry. So he prayed to the Lord and said, Lord, was not this what I said when I was still in my country? So he's talking to the Lord about uh, why he really didn't want to go. He said, therefore, I fled previously to Tarshish, for I know that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger, abundant in mercy, glory to God, where am I? glory to God, uh, and loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. Therefore now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, is it right for you to be angry? See, 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 Jonah knows that the word of God that God told him to preach to the Ninevites, that when he went and preached it, it would do what the word was designed to do. Even though they stankiness, come on now, had come all the way up to heaven, glory to God, you, you can't be so funky that God don't love you. Oh, come on now, come on now, come on now, come on now, come on now. And, and, and God, uh -huh, like the prodigal son, when he came home after slopping them pigs, you know, he didn't have no time to get, no wa get in no water. Glory to God. And he coming down the road, and his father saw him afar off, and his father didn't wait for him to go take a shower and shave and none of that stuff. His father went and just bear hugged him. Come on now. And said, look, go and put a new ring on his finger, put sandals on his feet, and put a new robe on him. He did not allow his condition to stop him from loving him. See, the scripture tells us nothing separates us from the love of God. Right. And, and, and no matter how bad Nineveh was, they were still people whom God loved. Find somebody and say, God loves me. Uh -huh. And he loves them. In fact, Pastor, and he loves them too. Oh, glory to God. See, now, 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 now you got to get into this one, amen. Glory to God. See, when, 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 hey, 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 hey. Well, as we are dealing with so many issues in this country today, people arguing about critical race theory and people arguing about replacement theory, people arguing about pro-abortion, people arguing about pro-life, you know, all these arguments, you cannot allow the arguments to cause you to take your eyes off of the living God to take your eyes off of the word of God. And I don't care what your personal opinion is, if the word is not the final authority, you're on the wrong side. Oh, glory to God. And see, people on this side, he loves them just as much as he loves the people on the other side. Oh, glory to God. And we're all from one blood. We all come from one. Come on now. And if you're going to be a child of the living God, faith works by love. Faith Works by love. Faith works by love. See, God will give you the faith to love folk you can't stand. <laughs> God will give you the faith to love you. See, the problem sometimes is that you don't, it's not that you don't love your neighbor. You don't love you. You don't love you. And see, that's why Jesus gave us the 11, the 11th commandment. Okay. Love ye one another as I have loved you. Because he knew some of us at one time didn't love ourselves. Tried to find love in other things, in other places running all the time from the presence of the Lord who loves us with all of his heart. With all, oh, there, there it is, unconditionally. And is willing to pour into you any and everything he needs to pour into you. Because the Bible says, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Come on now. He said, glory to God. Oh, the Lord, y'all ain't helping me, is my shepherd. I shall not want glory to God. Oh, he said, delight thyself. I feel your Holy Ghost in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. You see, everything you need can be found in Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. You have no need. But see, the Bible says you got to learn how to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Oh, but here it is, glory to God. As he adds them unto you, you got to understand that he is not particular or he shows no partiality. 
Glory to God. If he'll do it for you, he'll do it for somebody else too. So you can't decide who God is and is not going to love. You can't have this Jonah spirit. Help me, God. You can't have this Jonah spirit where you're thinking that, 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 that these people are not deserving of your love because, of, because all, all, God, help me, have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Come on now. Oh, you can't look at the pot, the pot and talk about how black it is and you are skilly. Amen. Glory to God. Watch this now. Let's go back to Jonah chapter 1. Jonah chapter 1, verse 15 and 17. Amen. So Jonah, then, you know, we, you're getting understanding a lot of stuff here. But let's go back. So they picked Jonah up and they threw him into the sea. And when they did, the sea stopped. The sea stopped raging. Uh-huh. And you know that had to mess with him right there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He is who he said he is, and he does serve a God who has this kind of power. Amen. Watch this now. Verse 16. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and they offered sacrifice, and they took vows. See, they saw, they, they, they changing God. Amen. Come on now. Come on now. Glory to God. And see, the reason why God has you in where, wherever it is he has you is that you are light in darkness. Oh, glory to God. And see, that's why when you're light in darkness, you can't, di you can't dim down your light. I feel like, I feel like I, I need to go there. I said, when you are light in darkness, you can't dim down your light because you're in darkness. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Find somebody that said, turn it up. Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. And see, watch this. See, you, you, most folk want to turn down their light because they want to blend in. Uh, with the darkness, amen. Uh, but they want to have just enough light to stand out, but not enough light to stand out. Oh, but God, uh, he's talking to us. See, you can run, but it is not going to work. Oh, glory be to God, because you have been chosen. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And the, the Bible says the giftings and the calling of God are without repentance. Amen. So if God done called you and gifted you for a specific task, glory to God, going to stay on you. Amen. Because he wants you to complete it. Amen. Now, 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 now yeah, you can be stubborn. You can be hard-headed. You can decide you're not going to do it. And he will find somebody else. Oh, glory to God. But one of the torments of hell is knowing that you didn't have to be there. Oh, oh, uh, you know, sometimes when we talk to uh, uh, counsel uh, uh, men about their marriage, glory to God, uh, or, or women about their marriage, and, you know, and, you know, at a point where they say, you know, I'm ready to throw in the towel or something like that, and, 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 and you know, it's still fixable. Somebody said fixable. 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 You know, I'm talking about things that are fixable now. I'm talking about fixable. Amen. Glory to God. I tell them sometimes, you know, one of the things that mess you up is you decide to throw in the towel. And then you drive by there, your house, what used to be your house, and get there out front. Oh, come on now, come on now. The one nothing mess you up worse than seeing somebody enjoy what you threw out. And you ain't got nobody to blame but you. Hallelujah. Because God knows what he's doing. Somebody said God knows what he's doing. Look at verse 17. And, and the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah, uh, to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Amen. So one of the things about God, when God calls you to do something, God has already prepared for it. Amen. And now, can I tell you something? That even, your, even the enemy's plots and plans are part of God's. Amen. Glory to God. Because God has peeped the enemy's whole card. Amen. God knew that Jonah was going to flee. Uh huh. God knew that he was going to be on the boat. And God prepared the storm. And God had prepared the fish. Come on now. Because he know, hey, I'm going to get it done. I'm going to get it done. And so when they threw Jonah overboard, I don't know if Jonah even hit the water. I, the fish was just right, waiting right there. And, and, and look, look, swallowed him whole. Find somebody say he swallowed him whole. Swallowed him 
didn't chew him or nothing, just swallowed him whole. And then the fish had enough capacity on the inside that Jonah was able to, uh, to, to live and breathe inside of the belly of the fish. Oh, hallelujah. See, don't tell me that God don't know how to help you in the situation that you're in. Amen. And even sometimes if, it, if, it ha <laughs> if he has to put you on lockdown, he knows how to put you on lockdown. Oh, glory to God. See, some folk, glory to God, had they not gone to prison, they'd have been dead right now. I feel your Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. Because you were so crazy that you couldn't know how, you didn't know how to keep you. So God put you in a place where you got kept. Hey, oh glory, until now you got enough revelation how to keep yourself in line with the word of God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. See, God had to grow you up in some areas. Can I, uh, I got to say this for, for my men. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible tells us that iron sharpens iron. But brothers and brothers, glory to God, we got to get out of this thing where we're polishing one another. See, sometimes brothers will come into a meeting or come into a place and all they want to do is polish one another. Uh -huh. But see, friction has to rub off some of that rust, some of that dullness. You got to be sharp as it relates to the word of God, not, not, not shiny as it relates to the world. See, when you're in therapy, Therapy ain't always good. Therapy gonna make you realize some hard points. Amen. Ther therapy will make you deal with the trauma and the tragedy uh, uh, that you done had in life. So that now you can be better. And see, in other words, you, 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 you and the brother not celebrating what y'all went through. Or what y'all in. No, 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 no. You, you're learning how to come out and how to stay out. Glory to God. And, and, and so, 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 so there's an edge that has to be knocked off you. Glory to God. My wife bought a knife. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me. My wife bought a knife. We got a, we got a bunch of knives. Hallelujah. Got some that we didn't have for a long time, but they done got dull. Because I put them in a little wood keeper. But she bought this knife that has a sleeve that every time you put it in, it sharpens it. And every time you pull it out, it sharpens it. It, it, it makes sure the blade stays sharp. So, brothers, what I'm saying to you, glory to God, by the grace of God, as we talk and as we meditate, as we reason together, understand, glory to God, we're not there to polish one another. Oh, yes, yes, we want to lift the continents, glory to God, in the end, but there's a rust, there's an edge, there's, there's some dullness as it relates to the word of God. We got we to knock off so that we can be sharp according to the word of God. I just pray you receive that by faith. Glory be to God. Oh, hallelujah. See, because we can't have no Jonah spirit. Amen. Watch this now. You know, God sent a storm. God prepared a fish. But here's the thing. Jonah had to be in the belly of the fish for three days before he started to pray. In the next chapter, we find that the Bible says, then Jonah prayed from the belly of the fish. After being in the belly of the fish for three days. You see, sometimes you can be so stuck on stupid. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Sometimes you can be so stuck on you that it takes being in a situation long enough for you to realize, glory to God, this is beyond my control. Oh, glory to God. God still has his hand in what's going on in me. Amen. Glory to God. See, after three days and Jonah was still living, the Bible said, Jonah, then, what was that? Then, that is in verse 1, then Jonah prayed to the Lord from the fish's belly. But he'd been there three days. Been there three days. Sometimes patience has to have its perfect work. Sometimes God has to put you in a place where you don't know, don't see how you're going to come out. For you to realize the only way I'm going to come out of this is by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Because, watch this now. If he done kept me three days, yes. he must be keeping me for a reason. Right, if he done kept me this long, yes. he must have a plan. Glory yes. to God. Uh, and now, watch this. He done told me the plan. Right. What I need to do is line up and be ready to get with his plan. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. Glory. Amen. Glory to God. Watch this now. Oh, hallelujah. My God. Somebody said, my God. 
is an awesome God. After Jonah prayed, Jonah chapter, t chapter 2, verse 10, so the Lord spoke to the fish, and he vomited him up onto dry land. Now, 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 I don't know how far Jonah had got on the boat. Okay. Amen. For they throw him, threw him okay. overboard. Amen. But I know in the belly of the fish, he didn't know where he was. Uh huh. And the fish had turned and went to Nineveh. <laughs> and then threw him up, took him right where he was supposed to go. Glory to God. This is God, amen, who has the ability to do anything but fail. See, 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 our problem is we try to understand God, hallelujah, on a uh, natural plane instead of understanding that God is supernatural. Glory to God. That God is able to do anything, anytime, anywhere, any way he wants to do it. He is not limited by time or space. Glory to God. And even our thinking is finite as it compares to his. Oh, glory to God. And so you and I got to start to believe in the infinite God and his ability to do it his way. Glory to God. He threw him up on dry land. Glory to God. Now, so Jonah has to go into Nineveh. He has to go preach. Now, now he, he got to be, he, he, he got to be, you know, no, 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 no. The interesting thing here is that having received the grace and mercy of God, Jonah still, and prayed to God, Jonah still is unrelenting in his attitude. Mm -hmm. he, he, he's not yet completely surrendered to the power of, of God, although God is demonstrating his power in Jonah's life. Look at Jonah chapter 3. What does it say? Verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city. Preach to it the message I will tell you. So Jonah arose, and he went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in extent, and Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk, and he cried out and said, Yet in 40 days Nineveh shall be overthrown. Amen, overthrown. Now y'all know 40, glory to God, of repentance, and 40 is a, is a whole lot in 40. I ain't got time for that right now, glory to God. But no, he's preaching that thing. See, he's preaching that thing. Okay, and now in verse 5, so the people of Nineveh will uh, believe God. Now, watch this now. Jonah preached the message that God had told him. Can I just say this for a minute? When you and I preach the message that God has told us to preach, don't worry about whether or not the message is going to do anything. Don't worry about the condition of the people that we're preaching that to. We just preach the word. Come on now. When we preach the word that God has said to preach and let the word do the work, don't worry. Don't worry, because God, God will watch over his word to perform his word. God, see, 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 his word don't need no help from us, glory to God, except for to preach it or to put it out in the world, amen? Glory to God. God that, that, that's all God wants us to do. Somebody shout amen. amen. Oh, hallelujah. Look at verse 10. Then God saw the work, because what had happened was Nineveh got in sackcloth and ashes and they repented. And the Bible says, God saw the, their work, and he turned from, and they turned from their evil ways, and God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. Go. See, 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 the enemy been petitioning against you day and night, night and day. Come on now. But glory to God, Jesus has been interceding for you night and day. Come on now. Glory to God. And, 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 and because he, he knows I died, come on now, that they could have a right to eternal life. Amen. Glory to God. And so uh, here it is. God is showing Jonah his grace and his mercy. He's showing it not only to the Ninevites, but he's showing it to Jonah in the grace and the mercy that he's extended toward Jonah. But yet Jonah's heart has not yet softened enough that he, will, he was willing to believe that they were deserving. 
See, it's not, how, it's not what you believe, it's what God believes. Amen? Oh, glory to God. Look what uh, uh, Jonah chapter 4, verse 89, look what it says. And it happened when the sun arose, God prepared a vehement heat, uh, uh, east wind, and the sun beat upon Jonah's head, and he grew faint. Then he wished, that, he wished for death in himself. It is better for me to die than to live. God, help me. Glory to God. Then God said to Jonah, is it, is it right for you to be, well, let me, I, I done got ahead of myself. Help me, God. Let me, let, me just, let me just tell you. Jonah built him a little lean-to, and he sat on the hill looking over Nineveh to see what was going to happen. But the people repented, and God relented. Amen. But, 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 but while he's sitting on the hill waiting to see what was going to happen, the shelter he made was inadequate in that it could not provide him the kind of shade that he really needed. And so God caused the plant to grow up and to add to the shade for Jonah. Uh -huh. And Jonah was thankful, the Bible says, for the plant. But then God caused a worm to come up and to beat, bite on the plant, and the plant dried up. Now the heat beat on Jonah, and Jonah, Jonah, Jonah's upset. And so God ends up having a talk with Jonah and saying, Jonah, wait a minute now. You were happy about the plant that you didn't have nothing to do with, that I provided for you, that you could be in shade. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But then you angry because you, uh, I, I sent a worm and, and the plant died because you're angry because of how it affected you. He said, he said well, the people of Nineveh, glory to God, aren't they entitled to the same grace that I gave you? You see, oftentimes we think glory to God because we are in a different position or a different space in time because we, you know, we've been, we've been doing this for a minute or two, glory to God. We think we, 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 we got the ups on somebody else and we refuse to give them the same grace that was extended to us. God trying to tell somebody today, glory to God, glory to God, glory, 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 glory. Look, the same grace that I extended to you to get you to where you are, you've got to extend the same grace to somebody else. Glory to God. If you want to be like me, the same grace, the same grace. And the same faith that you had to change, you got to believe that they can have that same faith to change too. Amen? Glory to God. And see, the Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And the words of our testimony, amen. See, sometimes you got to testify not just on how good God has been to you, but how good God really is, amen. And, this, and, and that glory to God, he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Y'all still with me? Oh, yeah. Glory to God, amen. So, hallelujah. See, Ephesians 4, 26 says, be angry. But sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Then Romans 2 and 4 says this. Do not despise the richness of his goodness, forbearance, long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth to repentance. Amen. First Peter, I'm sorry, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all, somebody shout all, all should come into repentance. Amen. Glory to God. And then Matthew chapter 5, verse 7 says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain or receive mercy. Amen. You know, if you go to Matthew chapter 20, verses 10 through 12, uh, maybe uh, 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 that, that, that chapter there, you find a story where Jesus uh, told the disciples about people who had agreed to work in the field for Daenerys. And... Uh, the some came that he hired early in the morning, some hired about midday, some hired late in the afternoon, and when time for the payout came, every man received a Daenerys, a Daenerys, well, you know, they, they, they received the same amount. And the ones who had started early were upset about it. And, and he said, wait a minute, didn't we not agree on this? And he, he says, can I do with mine what I desire? Glory to God. Even when the disciples were arguing about some things, Jesus even tell them, that don't have nothing to do with you. Glory to God, what I, whatever, do what I've called you to do. Don't worry about what I'm doing in the life of somebody else. Are y'all still with me, amen? So we can't get to this, this point where we want to pick and choose or we think that, 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 that God's going to play favorites. God's not going to play favorites. God wants to do what he wants to do in our lives, amen? See, that's why our lives and our speech has to be seasoned with salt. Our speech has to be seasoned with salt. 
the way we talk to people, the way we uh, 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 interact and fellowship with people has to be seasoned with salt. Let me just give you this thing here, glory to God. Somebody say salt. Salt. The S means to start a conversation. You got to be willing to start a conversation in faith. Start a conversation around the word of God. Keep the conversation in that vein, amen, so that you can help somebody, amen. Glory to God. God will put a word in your mouth, and when you allow the Spirit of God to lead you and guide you, glory to God, you may be able to bring somebody to repentance because you, your, your speech is seasoned with salt, and you are willing to start a conversation with them. The A is for you got to ask questions, amen. You got to ask some questions. You got to find out where they are. Seek to understand, then to be understood. See, the more you ask people questions, one of the things my wife uh, often says is that uh, wherever a person was for around about the age seven, eight, nine, or ten, that's where they develop their core beliefs. And you can under, you can really understand where that person is coming from when you understand where they've come from. Uh huh. So we got to ask some questions and glory to God and glory to God. Then, thank you for that, God. God will give you, watch this now, word of wisdom and word of knowledge in that situation if, that, if you believe it. Somebody shout amen. Because God has called you and I to be the salt of the earth. Amen. The L is for listen, glory to God. Not only listen to what they're saying, but you got to listen for the voice of God. You got to listen for the voice of God. You got to let God talk to you about what it is that's going on with them. Amen. And when God talks to you, God will tell you you what to say and what not to say amen see God will give you a whole download on them but he'll only tell you to say this much amen and you can't try to say everything that God said to you about the person because they ain't ready to receive that they ain't ready to receive that they ain't ready to receive that amen that's for you to be praying about as it relates to them or y'all hear what I'm saying but let me go a little further as you're listening to the voice or listening to them and listening to the voice of God you my brother my sister have to have spent time in the presence of the Lord and gotten to know what God or who God sound like Jesus said my sheep know my voice Amen. And a stranger they would not follow. But the enemy knows how to mimic God. Amen. And so you've got to know God in such a way that glory to God, when you're hearing a voice talk to you, you got to know or you should know for certain that that is God and that's not your own human spirit talking back to you sounding like God. Amen. Ooh, God, help me right there. Glory to God. Uh, then you got to, the T is you got to tell of the goodness of God. Amen. You got to talk about how good God is or how good God has been to you. Amen. You got to tell about his goodness. Amen. It's something about when you all, I heard somebody say, when I start thanking God for this, oh, glory to God, then it comes up in my spirit, there's something else that he's done. Amen. And I, I can't thank him for one thing, but without thinking of another thing that he's done for me. Somebody shout amen. So when, you're, when our speech is seasoned, with salt, amen. Jonah had to learn that. Somebody shout amen. Jonah had to learn that. Jonah had to learn that. Jonah had to learn that, amen. Colossians says, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. And as my wife comes, glory to God, there is a thing called righteous indignation righteous indignation it's when uh you got you're angry about something uh glory to god let me let me, let me try to get it right let me make sure i get it right let me make sure i get it right glory to god uh your emotions can be involved mm -hmm. when you're looking at something where you perceive that insults or injustice or mistreatment has ha happened to somebody you can have a righteous indignation because of that thing that happened. Well, it serves to reason, if there can be righteous indignation, there can be unrighteous indignation. Are you, and what Jonah was suffering from was unrighteous indignation. Oh yes, the Ninevites were nasty. The Ninevites had done some stanky stuff, amen? But God said for him, go to Nineveh, that great city, their wickedness has come up before me. Preach my word that they may repent. If they repent, I will not destroy. But Jonah will feel with anger and unrighteous indignation because of how he felt about them.
he went in the opposite direction. But then God made him go anyway. And then God showed him grace, showed him mercy, and asking him the question, don't you see how I've graced you? Don't you see how merciful I've been to you? And yet you still have the audacity to think they don't deserve my grace and my mercy. As we continue to matriculate through this life, you can run, but it's not going to work. You've been chosen by God to be a barrier of the word of God, a carrier of the word of God to a hurt and dying world. And the same grace that saved you, he wants you to be able to offer that grace to somebody else. Because his wish is that no man perish, but all come to repentance. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So he just said it, right? He just said it that, that we thank God for his grace and his mercy and his saving grace. Amen. Okay. I'll hold it way down here. And we thank him. And you know, when we, when we think about Jonah and think about how he was just so, as he said, righteous, you know, indig indignation, right? And he didn't think that he deserved it. It reminded me of this young lady that um, she was agnostic. And over the time, we witnessed to her and she finally accepted Christ as her Lord and her Savior. But she had a problem with the things that she had done, and she was like, but God forgive me for this? Well, God forgive me for what I've done? And, and the thing was, yes, God will forgive you for no matter what it is. And then at that time, there was a story, and I don't know if it's true or not, but there was a story out about a man that was in prison who had done some awful crime. Uh, he had been known to kill people and to even eat the people, right? And he went to, to prison, and he went to prison, and then while he was in prison, the, the story was that he got saved. So her question was, would God even forgive him? Because this man ate people. But the point is, God has no respect of sin, and that's what we forget about. He has no respect of sin. So no matter what you've been going through, no matter what you may have done in your past, we have a mighty God, a loving God, that will forgive you for anything that you may have done. And all you have to do is just come to him. He made it simple because he sent his only son, his only begotten son, that all you gotta do is believe in him. And then you have a chance for eternal life. Hallelujah, praise God. He made it that simple. And all you have to do is just confess. Confess who he is. Confess that you're a sinner. And so you just say, it. and if you need to say that prayer, we'll say that prayer with you right now. And all you have to do is you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner. And right now, I believe, I have faith and believe that Jesus can save me. And right now, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And by faith, I believe that I've been saved. Now, if you say that prayer, and you really mean that prayer, you've been saved. But your next step is, where do I go from here? Your next step is that just because you got you got in, so you need to study, and you need to learn his word because you have to become a doer of his word. And as he said, we have to become those missionaries. We got to go out. Anybody that you can come in contact with, the people on your job, the people at your school, it's up to you to witness to them because he doesn't want anybody to perish. Just like he didn't want those bad people in Nineveh to perish, 
He doesn't want the people that we are dealing with today. And as we leave here and we turn on the news, there's no telling what we're going to hear next, right? We don't know if some person's going to go and kill a bunch of more people for, for just crazy reasons and everything. We don't know. You know, we, I was at work this week and somebody just drove by and just decided they just start shooting. You know, and you just don't know where those bullets are land. But why we still have breath and we just got to keep our faith in God, plead the blood of Jesus over yourself and over your family Amen. daily and have faith in him. Amen. And so if you've accepted him and you kind of went astray, then it's simple. Just say, Daddy, I'm sorry. And, and rededicate your life and then get ready to do what he's called you to do. And last but not least, if you don't have a church home, you're welcome to come and join us here at Mount Coma Ministries. And we're located at 2015 Grove Street in the city of Vicksburg, Mississippi. <laughs> Amen. 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 So now we're going to invite uh, Deacon Coleman to come up and of course and then Minister Wilson's going to come up and, and have a prayer and De Deacon Coleman's going to have a story for us and a scripture. Amen. Or who knows who's going to have a story. Good afternoon, everybody. It's tied in offering time. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. You know, I, no, I, didn't, I don't have a story for the day, but I did just have just a little, little short word. Um, you know, with everything going up nowadays, I yeah, was we talking this morning about my wife was trying to get some chicken for Memorial Day, and she said, you know, I looked at the pack of chicken yesterday. We, we, like, we like the white meat, so... We were trying to get some chicken wings, and she said the little pack of wings we normally get was $17. I said, well, good grief, $17. And I told you, know, go and buy a whole chicken, because you know, we could cut the chicken, and we'd talk about how many pieces, how many, <laughs> how many pieces of chicken you get a whole chicken. She said the whole chicken was $9. $9. And you know, I was just, I was, I, you know, I was, I was trying to research, you know, I'd be trying to find some little, little witty lines to get up here with. But you know, just think with everything going up, the ties ain't going up to 15%. It's still 10. <laughs> it's still 10. It's still 10, y'all. It's time and offering time. So it's still 10. So you know, y'all ain't got don't get mad at God. It's still 10%. <laughs> it, 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 it's still 10%, all right. <laughs> so if y'all would, y'all would, if, if y'all would, please stand up with me and open your Bible to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. <laughs> We're we going to start the sixth verse and read the principles of giving. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according to his purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always have an all sufficiency of all things may abound to every good work. So I don't care how things, how things go, how, how they go. God's still God. Amen. He got cattle on a thousand hills. Yes. That's right. And we can't beat him giving. Pray with us, please. Yes, Lord. For all you do. Yes, Lord. Father, as we look around, Father, we see inflation. Yes. We see calamities. We see wars. We see just all kinds of sickness. Mm. But, Father, we understand, Father, that you've got this whole world in the palm of your hand. Oh, yeah. And, Father, we thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. And, Father, we know, Father, that you are the whole source of all being. And Father, we just want to thank you, Father. Thank you. It's just for our very lives. That's right. And 
all the things that you provide for us, both seen and unseen. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you just bless these bless. tithes and these offerings. Yes. Amen. 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 Would you bring your tithes and offerings from the Ridley Church around the walls, please? 